Maybe just turn to your neighbor and give a huge smile and say, you are loved by our Lord Jesus. Okay. Are we ready to praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Today we just come, we bring you glory, we bring you honor, God. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are the King above all kings, God. You are the Savior, Lord. We are so privileged to be called your children, Lord. We are so privileged to be called loved, God, by you. You have chosen us, Lord, to be here today, God. You have chosen us to be in this life, Lord. Thank you, God, that today we can turn our eyes to you, God. Thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy.
who breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless, you know and wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. the 
darkest day in history They're on the cross They're on the cross They're made for sinners For every curse is blood at all One final breath and it was finished Not the end we could have known For the earth For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens rose
This house is yours. You welcome here. You welcome here. It's an open door. This house is yours. You welcome. You welcome here. You welcome here. It's an open door. This house is yours. You welcome here. You welcome here. It's an open door. This house is yours to break the bread. Pour the Emmanuel, God with us, come sit with us, Lord meet with us today. We've set a place for you at the table, we make space and we
open door this house is yours you're welcome here you're welcome here it's an open door this house is yours you're welcome you're welcome here you're welcome here it's an open door this house is yours you're welcome you're welcome here you're welcome here it's an open door this house is yours it's an open it's an open door this house is yours to break the bread for the Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord. We can gather in your name. This morning, Father, we declare that our expectancy is of you, God. Thank you that your word is powerful and alive, Lord, and it cannot return void without accomplishing what you have set out for it to do. Good morning, everyone. You are so welcome in the house of God. Please find a seat. There are a few more very comfortable, very holy seats open in front. Awesome ladies. Thank you for your courage. You can move to the front. Hello. Welcome. Three, four, five seats, six, seven in front still open. It's awesome to have you with us in the house of God. If you're live streaming with us, you're also very welcome. Do consider visiting us in person. It's absolutely awesome. There's nothing like being in the presence of God and being amongst the saints. It's absolutely different than surfing on your couch. Just some food for thought. The word of the Lord that's been on my heart this week is from Psalm 9 verse 10. And it says, those who know your name, trust you, O Lord, for you, O Lord, will not forsake those who seek you. So I want to encourage you with that, irrespective of where you are at this morning in your heart, or in your mind, or in your bank balance, God will not forsake those who seek him. Before we do the announcements this morning, I am super excited to share with you that we will again be rolling out a new cycle of Me Too Mentoring. What is Me Too Mentoring? Me Too Mentoring is a very special part of the Awakened Women's Ministry. We, as women of different generations, all shapes and sizes really, um, come together once a month. And we talk about a specific topic, we share our lives, we learn from each other, in actual fact grow together as we discuss things, get into each other's lives and attempt to do life together. I want to encourage you to consider joining us this cycle. We're going to have a... Um, a registration link up on the comms group later today or even tomorrow. Join us. We'll divide in smaller groups. We will. The main aim for me really is praying for each other. So if nothing else, you'll be assured of being prayed for every day. And I can talk a lot about me to ministry and what it's meant for me in my life and how I've intentionally um, met up with women who I probably would not have met up with in the space of the last three years. But I'm going to ask Kirby to share with us what it meant to her. Morning, everyone. Um, They say that behind every successful man, there's a prayerful woman. Um, But we also need support. We also need each other. And we need also to be mentored or to be heard or to be able to share with each other. Um, And something I realized in the last year of... um, being part of me to mentoring was 
that no testimony ever starts with, I did this and I was so in control and then the Lord came and did this. It always starts with somewhere in the testimony you had to give over control and you had to surrender and you had to start trusting the Lord. And I think what really meant a lot for me with me to mentoring is that we are all ladies of different ages, younger ladies, older ladies, and we get together. But there's an anointing on that and you feel safe. And can convict you and if you just carry on with life and you make your children your identity and your work and your whatever then if you never go and sit still and spend that time with the Lord where he can really come and convict you of your sins and if you're in a place where you is it working? if you're in a place where you need to pray for other people then the Lord also comes and he shows you the little things in your own life that you can sort out and that you can deal with so really I I I can't really think of a reason why someone shouldn't join this. It's only once a month, and then you're being covered. The price you get for that once a month is to get covered every day in prayer. Thanks. Thanks, Gribby. Yeah. Oh, do you want to say for those who have been um, involved already, Me Too will change to connect to, just to distantiate us a bit more from the Me Too movement, with, which has... Um, quite a worldly and a negative connotation. So look out for connect to, but it's, it's in essential, essentially the same thing. All right, Andresha, announcements? Who is here for the first time with us this morning? If you can raise your hand. You're so welcome. We'd love to give you an information card. If you feel comfortable, do fill that in and just pop it in the offering bag after the service. <laughs> no worries. We're a church. We're a church. We're plenty towards children. So, oh, Lippy. Good morning, everybody. You are so welcome in the house of the Lord. For those I did not see, yes, please. Happy New Year. May it be a blessed year. That is my sister's son. I miss Sissy, so family first. Praise the Lord. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, please note that please keep your belongings with you at all times, even when you come uh, to the front for ministry. And then Nikki already did that, new visitors. If you did not receive a chocolate, please raise your hands and we'll give it to you. <laughs> okay. And then the bathrooms, for those of you did, do not know, when you go downstairs at your left-hand side, at the back, there's a bathroom and also through the kitchen, through the lounge area kitchen, and at your left-hand Sorry, I can't wait to eat awesome om kinders onder beheer te hou. But anyway, praise the year. Uh, birthdays. Uh, kom ek kijk eers wie vir, allemaal verstaan Afrikaans, sorry. 
Als ik zo so moe is, raak mijn Engels op. Um, het enig iemand voor jaar hier die week wat voorbij is? Het was jouw birthday. Want ik give you a chocolate. Taylor, we know you've been city this weekend. Okay. Oh, sorry. Zien wat gebeurt wanneer een mens moeg is. Een vrouw wil je uitje, maar bij de hand voor die, so who cares? Looking good, hè? Hey? Happy birthday, Taylor. Only Taylor. Niemand wil een chocolate. Oké, okay, man, check jullie birthdays of het erg is. So, don't lie. Um, anyway, happy birthday, Taylor. I'm so sorry. Jij lijkt je zo niet zo ziet. 25. Um, Oké, okay, just a few announcements. Pastor Ruke in a healing training with Meds Daisel. She was the one that uh, spoke on, I think, mental health at Convergence. Uh, so if you want to join, it's 7 to uh, 9. 23rd of Jan until the 27th of April, so it's every Monday until the 27th of April. Uh, training, it will be here via Zoom. Um, and if you want to join, please contact Nikki. Okay, that's Nikki, the Wifro Urfiele. We have a meet and greet Wednesday, 25th of Jan, uh, 6.30 here in this building. Uh, so if you started coming to our congregation the last year, so please Please join us. We just want to welcome you into the family. And yeah, and you can also uh, contact us at the office. There's no sign up form. I just realized. Um, but no worries. Just contact us. Uh, or just come, Nikki. Just come. And then we have a Bring and Bry the 27th of January. It's our family uh, Bring and Bry. Sorry, it's not just a come and eat. It's a Bring and Bry. Please bring lots of meat, like Heinrich said last week, so that we can share with those who does not have. Uh, it will be 6 o'clock here at the office. And then Sunday, the 5th of February, we have our baby dedication Sunday. So if you would like to dedicate a baby, please contact the office. Um, we will be... <laughs> Uh, willing to just, waar, ja, hallelujah. Contact for Nikki, want ik is duidelijk bij die mekaar voor ogen. And then save the date for our church family camp. It's the third until the fifth of March. Ons moet zeker meer zeggen save the date. Jij moet nog niet alsjeblieft registreer. Um, you will see there's a, a on the comms group we have put the a link on that you can register or just scan the code and. And then you can register for the camp. Also, small group. If you want to join one of our small groups, please fill in your name down at the info desk. I see there's a Timothy that wants to be an elder and a Joseph that wants to be in the courts of Pharaoh on the form. So if you want to be one of those, please put your name down there. And then the offering will be taken up after the service. And parents, please go fetch your kids after this service, before you drink coffee. But please join us for a coffee after the service. Um, Nikki. Awesome. This is family and this is home, so yeah, we make mistakes, yeah, we learn from each other, yeah, yeah, we grow together. All right, so you might remember late last year, Pastor Richard Wade from Show for Frontrook shared a very special message with us. It's really inspiring about their journey in Frontrook, developing their building and the vision for the healing center that um, will be established this year in Frontrook. So this morning, I'm excited to um, announce that we have and welcome Jolene Wade with us. Jolene. <laughs> Jolene passed this uh, show for Frontrook with Richard, and she's a special friend. I can say many things about you, but what I want to highlight this morning is your absolute obedience to God without having any of the details necessarily always. What I see from you and Richard is you follow hard after Jesus. If he says turn right, you turn right. If he says turn left, you turn left. I want to commend you for that. Let's just stretch out our hands while I pray for her. Father, thank you, Lord, for this vessel. God, this vessel of obedience, God. Thank you, Lord, that she seeks your face, God, that she, she goes aside, God, to hear what's on your heart for each and everything in her life. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you will come with a coal of fire and anoint her mouth, Lord, that she will bring a word that's on your heart for this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Um, 
It's so good to be with you. Are there people in the overflow downstairs? Yes? So if the overflow can see me, there's a whole bunch. There are four more chairs here in front that's, that's open. So I'm doing housekeeping. And there's two, three, four more. So we've got eight chairs at the top. If you hear me, you're welcome to come up. All right. Um, it's just slightly different when you're in the room than online. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Heinrich and Nikki. I didn't think I was going to see Heinrich, but that man is Superman. He was here this morning, and then he's on his way to, to preach in Stellenbosch. Um, yeah, so I just want to honor Heinrich and Nikki. You know them better than I think most of us know them, but they are just incredible, aren't they? They're just incredible, the humility and the absolute just the way you guys have laid down your whole lives for five years and a five more. And we, we honor you and we love you. And we see, we don't see everything, but we appreciate you. Um, and for you as a congregation, I know you sacrifice a lot because you often have to send him away and send Nikki away and share them with other people. So thank you for the rest, from the rest of the Shofar movement. We appreciate it. Oh, come brave, Sila. Come here, come, come. Come, come here, it's black. Um, so I'm Jolene Wade. Richard was here last year. Who, who was here when Richard was here from Franschuk? Oh, great. So you saw the better part of me. Um, he's amazing. We've been there for five and a half years. Never thought we'd pastor a church. Never thought we'd do that. We are having so much fun. Definitely the most fun we've ever had. We love it. It's a cool church. It's cool people. Um, but we just, we're just excited about what God is doing and just the privilege of partnering and, and yeah, just co-laboring with Him. So it's really a privilege. I've got three, we've got, not just I, sometimes it feels like it's mine, but it's ours. Three little kids, um, bigger now, grade six, grade four, and grade two. The grade six boy is with me here this morning, William. They go to Stellenbosch Primary, so school starts this Wednesday. All the moms and dads know this. Who has started school already? Whose kids have started? And, okay, yes, no, see me. Not quite sure, uh-uh. All right, we bless you. We bless the kids that are going this week. Um, it's, it's good for them. It's good for them to go. It's good for the parents. It's good for everybody. Um, a little bit of background about me. I... Um, I wasn't always working for the church and admin, in ministry or in, how shall I say it, paid to do ministry. I've always been in full-time ministry. I mean, we're all there. Whether you work for the church or not, you're in full-time ministry if you follow Jesus. I um, studied in Stellenbosch. I studied Become Law, did LLB, and then I um, worked in a private bank doing contracts and later investment analyst for uh, 14, 15 years. So I only joined Richard um, full-time in the church in April of 2020. So before that, I worked at r Private Bank. Um, and I saw God move so powerfully in the bank, in the cubicles, <laughs> in the bathroom, in the kitchen. It's, it's really amazing how the Holy Spirit is not confined Amen. to Sunday mornings or whatever Wednesday night you meet. Um, yeah, so that, that's a bit of my journey. Um, but I know Heinrich asked me to share a little bit. Um, he spoke on Psalm 23, I believe, last week um, about setting the table that the Lord has set for us um, in the midst of our enemies, but actually just the table the Lord has set and the invitation to come and sit at this table. I didn't listen to his, um, his sermon, but he did send me a, a voice note with, I think, most of the details of what he shared. Um, but a table is really a place of intimacy, right? It's a place where we look into our, each other's eyes. If you've got smaller kids like my kids, last night was not a place of intimacy at our table. I mean, Richard was exhausted afterwards. He's like, why do we even do this? Just put them in front of the TV to eat. And I was like, no, we've got to keep trying because the one would eat and stuff her face with as much hot dog as she could. And, it's like, and the other one was coughing over his uh, brother's food and so sometimes when you're in the trenches, it doesn't feel like it, but at the table is where we connect, is where we build intimacy. And I, and I, um, I want to take it further. Heinrich asked me to speak specifically about the Holy Spirit this morning. 
And as I was... Um, as I was preparing and praying, I felt the Holy Spirit say, there are gifts at this table that Heinrich spoke about last week, the table that the Lord set for us. It doesn't matter in what season you are in, there's a table, and there's an invitation by Jesus to come and sit at this table. And at this table, there are gifts, presents. Okay, we all came out of Christmas, there are presents. So I'm going to speak about two gifts at the table this morning, but before we get there, um, I'm actually just going to pray for us, and then we're going to start. So, Father, we just thank you for the privilege to come together this morning. Yeah, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you just for knowing that, that you are good and that you want to meet with us this morning. And I thank you, God, that your glory will fill this room. I thank you, Father, for miracles. I thank you for healing. I thank you for, for words to just drop into each one of our hearts, Father. And I pray, God, that we will, yeah, Father, we just say that we're not here to Tick it off the box that I was in church this week, but we're here to meet with you. So we invite you, Holy Spirit. We ask, come and reveal the Father's heart to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, um, I just have one or two words. I just felt for a um, meneer with a blue shirt. Um, I, I don't know you at all, so I'm just going to feel tell you what I feel the Lord is saying. Um, I might be completely wrong, so I'm just going out in obedience. I feel God is saying that there are certain areas in your life that you've been trusting for peace, um, and that this is the year of peace for you. And I feel God is saying, especially in certain relationships, um, that you've been trusting for reconciliation and peace and breakthrough. I feel God is saying He sees your heart, and He's going to bless you with that peace this year. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Where's the, the couple that led the worship? Downstairs. Can they hear us? Daza! Oh, man. Okay. I'm speaking to you. What's his name? Hayden. Hayden. And was it his wife on the keyboard? I like this church. Hayden and his wife. I just felt God is saying, as you were worshiping, I felt him saying that he's seen your faithfulness in how you've served the house of the Lord. And I felt him saying that, that just as you've served and built his house, he's going to build your house. And I don't know if, um, if what you're specifically trusting for, whether it's a physical house or whatever it is, but I felt God saying that, don't worry about building your house. I'm going to build your house. And I also felt him saying that financial provision is not, a, not an issue. He's got it. He's got your back. Don't worry about the finances. It will come when needed. Right. Bless you downstairs. Okay, so um, we're going to start this morning with a little bit of a, for, for most of you that have walked with the Lord for a while, this will feel like basics, but sometimes the basics are good. Um, so we're going to start with, right in the beginning, the foundation of what was God's original plan for man, Adam and Eve. We go back to the Garden of Eden, and we see there that God's original plan, if you look at when God created the world before sin entered and, and all of that stuff happened, the first couple of chapters in Genesis, God created Adam and Eve firstly for relationship. We see in Genesis 3 verse 8, I've got it up. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, you can jump with me. Otherwise, we're going to go through a couple of scriptures, so it might be a lot. You're welcome to look up there. Genesis 3 verse 8 says, Then the man and his wife, that's Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the, of the garden. So this is after they've sinned. But what I want us to see is that God came in the cool of the day to walk with Adam and Eve. Isn't that special? Isn't that amazing? That the God of the universe would come down to these created beings and come and walk with them and just talk with them at the end of the day. I think I, 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 I don't get it, and I'm, good, I'm, I'm really happy that I don't get it because if I understood God, then he would be more human than God, and I don't want to serve a human God. So that's why very often we don't understand a whole lot of things about God, and that's good. <laughs> I know it's difficult for us Westerners. It's good for us. Um, but the, one of the things that really boggles my mind is that a God, the God of the universe that created everything with a word, 
would choose to come and have relationship with us mortal, sinful beings. And that was God's original plan. He wanted relationship, intimate relationship with us. We see that with Adam and Eve. The second thing that we see with Adam and Eve that God came and he said was in Genesis 1 verse 26. He gave Adam and Eve, he said, look, I'm going to come and walk with you in the cool of the day. But by the way, you're not just going to hang around, eat of the fruit and enjoy the garden. You're actually going to work. Okay? Work is from God. Amen. So in the begin of the year, no. It's good for you to work. It's from the Lord. But God said in Genesis 1, 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God called Adam and Eve to co-rule and co-reign with him over the earth. Do you see that? God said, let, I'm going to give you authority and dominion, and you are going to rule this earth. And it was God's intent, I believe, to not just have the Garden, in e- uh, garden of Eden in the little piece that it was in. I don't think it was little, but considered, considering the whole earth, I think it was slightly small. Um, but that is what they could manage, because remember, there were only two. But God's plan was for them to rule and reign, not just the Garden of Eden, but over all the fish of the sea, over all the earth. So the plan was always for God's kingdom to expand and to increase. Does that make sense? So the two main reasons, if we look at Genesis, why God created man, you and me, is for intimacy, relationship with him, and to co-rule and co-reign with us. God can reign the whole earth. He doesn't need us. But he chooses to partner with us. He chooses to partner with you and me wherever we are. His kingdom needs to come. Whether it's at home, when you're raising your kids, whether it's at work, whether it's at church, it doesn't matter. The kingdom of God must come. That's his plan. But then, unfortunately, we all know what happened. They ate of the fruit of the tree they weren't supposed to eat of. I think most people, whether you're Christian or not, know about that problem we got ourselves into. Um, they ate of the fruit of the tree, and what happened? Could they still stay in the Garden of Eden? No, they had to go out. So they couldn't walk. They, had, they didn't have that intimacy with God anymore. Do you guys see that? There was no walking in the cool of the day anymore. So, and that is the problem with sin. And I often tell my children that it's not about doing the right and the wrong thing. It's not about reading the Word of God and, oh, I can't eat that, and I can't eat that, and, and, and all these rules and regulations. It's not about that. You know what the problem is with sin? It separates us from God. That's the problem with sin. It's not about what you should and shouldn't do and about getting to heaven or to hell. It's about whatever we do, whenever we sin, we fall short of what God wants for us. Then there becomes a separation between us and God. And that is what happened to Adam and Eve. There was a separation. They had to go and stay outside the Garden of Eden. The second thing that happened was they listened to the snake, Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, the enemy. And what they did was they basically gave their authority to rule and reign the earth. They gave it over to the enemy. Does that make sense? So they gave, if you want, the keys to unlock and to rule and reign. They gave it over to the enemy when they listened to him. But the good thing is, that is why Jesus came. Amen? Amen. So this is foundational. I'm hoping you've got, um, I'm hoping that's not new to anybody. If it is, praise the Lord, we will pray for you. It is all good. We're all learning. Um, But that is why Jesus came. That's the basics, the, the sort of the foundation of the gospel. Jesus came to get us back, if you want, to to the place of the Garden of Eden. Does that make sense? Um, And in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18, we see there, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So then what happened was, we see the whole Old Testament, the people are trying, they're sacrificing a lot of animals. I mean, the amount of animals that got slaughtered to try and atone. So the whole Old Testament, we see them trying to atone and and rectify this distance between them and God, realizing that I am sinful and this is a holy God, but I need to get close to him, but I'm constantly falling short. So we have to slaughter and we have to do all these things. 
But in essence, the whole of the Old Testament points to man cannot do this alone. We need a Savior. We need a Savior. And that is why Jesus came. And this Corinthian scripture says, Jesus came to reconcile us to the Father. Isn't that amazing? Basically saying, you can now walk in the cool of the day with the Father again without anything separating you. Why? Because Jesus is standing between you and the Father. The Father sees you and relates to you through Jesus. Does that make sense? So that's the first thing. The second thing that, what did Adam and Eve lose? They lost their authority because they listened to the devil. Yes? No? You are alive? Yeah? Matthew 28 verse 18 says, Then Jesus came to them. This is his disciples. This is the Great Commission. This is Jesus had now already died. He's resurrected. He's on his way to heaven. He spent time, I think it was 40 days on the earth. He's giving them, the, his disciples, the instruction. And he's saying, look, I'm going. But you guys need to carry on. It's almost like a floor stocky. All the athletics are starting again. You know, the relay race that the kids run. Um, or maybe you still run it with your wife or whatever around the house. You need to take that off law stocky and carry on. And this is Jesus saying, hey, it's time for you to run. I've done my bit. I'm going to the Father. I've done my bit. So kind of the tag, you're it. You need to run the next part of the race. And for us, this is our season. This is the part we get to run. And we see there Matthew 28 verse 18, then Jesus came to them, to his disciples and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus, when he died, he went down to Hades. He got back all the authority that Adam and Eve gave to the devil. He came back up and he said, all authority. So if Jesus has got all authority, how much authority does the devil have? Nothing. Only that which you give him in your life. The devil has no authority in your life if you're born again believer. He doesn't. All authority has been given to Jesus unless you give him authority. Now that's another sermon. How do we give him authority? That's another sermon. One of those is when we sin, we open a door. We say, come on in. I give you authority to rule and reign in my life, in my house. But all authority has been given to Jesus. So Jesus came, he got back the keys And then he went and he said to his disciples, right, now you go. In Luke 9 verse 1, we see, then he, Jesus, called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over demons and to cure diseases. So Jesus now says, I got the authority back. Good news. What Adam and Eve didn't do right, I came and I fixed it all. All the authority have been given to me. I now give it to you. And that is why... He can expect the impossible from us. Does that make sense? Have you guys um, read the Great Commission and thought, that is just impossible? Or actually read the Bible and thinking, I cannot do any of this. I mean, I felt like this. I'm just trying to parent. And I'm like, where is the patience, the joy, the kindness, the goodness? It just feels totally impossible. And you know why? It's just always meant to be impossible. Because you're not supposed to do it out of your own. You're not supposed to do it out of your own. That is why Jesus came. But very often we try and we fall back into religion and it feels like we fall back into the Old Testament and we try and do it out all by ourselves and we try and perform and earn stuff and fix stuff. Once I've screwed up, I need to fix it. You know, what can I do to make it right with God or the people around me? But that is why Jesus came. And that's one of the gifts. I said there are two gifts on the table this morning. The table the Lord has set for each of us this year, every day. The first gift is the gift of salvation. Now, we all know that salvation is by grace we are saved. We all know that. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith. And this is is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift. And I think um, it's amazing how we get to build on what our forefathers or the church leaders of past or the evangelists or whatever you want to call them, what they kind of fought for, you know, understanding that salvation is a gift and that it's really, you cannot earn it, it's by grace and through faith, is something we take for granted. But it it wasn't always like that. We went to the Huguenot Museum this holiday for the first time in Franchuk, 
And um, terrible. We've been there for five and a half years. We drive past it every day. But we went there. And it was amazing to read about the Reformation and Martin Luther coming and saying, no, but it's by grace. And everybody is supposed to read the Bible. And you don't need to pay the church for your sins to be forgiven. And they were killed. They were persecuted. Not the persecution we sometimes think we get on social media or at work when your colleague looks skew at you or whatever it is. They were forced out of their country, out of France. That's where Franschuk started. As some of these Huguenots that were persecuted, that couldn't stay there anymore because they were murdered. Their kids, I mean, the photos there is just horrendous. What they would do with their kids because they said, no, we're not going to be part of the Roman Catholic Church anymore. We believe what the Bible is saying. Because for so many years, they couldn't read the Bible. Because the Bible was reserved for only those that are high and mighty, the priests. And we tell you what the Bible say, but they couldn't know. And Martin Luther came up and said, no, but it's by grace and through faith. So for us now, for us It's been preached so many times. We grew up knowing that salvation is a gift. Yeah? But there's another gift on the table. That's actually where I want to go go to. You know, a gift. We we had um, supper at a couple this week. um, And we went over to their house. And many of the people have still got their um, Christmas trees up. And under this Christmas tree was one gift left. Now, my kids are obviously, what is going on here? How is there a gift? You know, gifts are not supposed to be lying around still. And you just, and and it does look a little bit weird because you're like, why is there still a gift under the Christmas tree? And you realize that I didn't ask the lady, but. You do for me and I do for you. Talk to you guys this morning. Acts 2 verse 38, it says, Peter replied... This is now the greatest revival in history in Acts 2, when the church was born. Amazing. So much. People don't know what's going on. Confusion. A whole lot are getting saved. Others are saying these people are drunk. By the way, have you ever thought, why would they say they're drunk if they just prayed in the Holy Spirit? If they just prayed in tongues? Because we often think they were praying in tongues. They did. But have you, in front of we get a lot of international tourists. They walk, sorry, I'm maybe now cropping and it's what I can't crop anymore. Here we go, we're already there. <laughs> go for it. When you walk down the street to go to Woolworths or pick a pie in front of you, you hear people speaking Chinese, you know, whatever, French, German. We get a whole lot of tourists. And very often we would walk by, not one of my kids, or I think just because they're speaking a foreign language, they are drunk. Do you guys think when you hear somebody speak a different language, you don't think they're drunk. So, so what, what did it look like in that upper room? <laughs> I know for us Westerners, we like things controlled. But sometimes I wonder. I don't, I don't know. I don't think just speaking in a different language was all that was happening there. I think there was probably a couple of other things going, but I'll leave it there. So we see there, Peter replied, repent. This is now the famous sermon Peter did just after the Holy Spirit has been poured out. And he's trying to explain to the whole of Jerusalem what is going on. Okay, we are not drunk. We look like we are drunk, but we are not drunk. 
He says there, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the gift of salvation. That's salvation. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift that we receive. Very often when we read the Bible, we see that the Holy Spirit is likened to a dove, to wind, to fire. Some people think he's a ghost. He's not. He's God. He's one of the triune God. He's, he's God. He's, he's, he's God with us right now. He's a person. I know sometimes it's difficult. We can relate to God the Father. We can relate to Jesus. But you get to the Holy Spirit and people are like, not quite sure what to do with him. But he is God. And he's here with us. And Jesus said, it's better for me to go away because I can send you the Holy Spirit to come. So Jesus is still with us. Why? Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. I know. It's, it's, it's Try and explain that to a kid. That's nuts. All the parents have had those questions. How does it work, Mommy? I get any DNA. I do not know. But I know He's here, and I know He's God. And when we... Have you been invited to somebody's house or maybe you were kind of the add-on to the invitation and you got there but nobody really spoke to you and you kind of felt like, oh, I don't really know why I'm here. These people don't really want to speak to me. I don't feel welcome. Any of you been in a situation like that? It's just me that have been in those awkward, weird situations that you think, why am I even here? You know, or just in a conversation and you realize, but nobody's talking to me. I, I really need to, I just need to go to the toilet. But, you know, it's just weird. And that is what we sometimes do with the Holy Spirit. You see, unless I acknowledge somebody's presence, when they come and join our conversation, I say, hi, Nikki, this is Nikki, guys, introducing or whatever. Unless I acknowledge, I don't get the benefit of what they're bringing into the conversation and into the room. And very often when it comes to the Holy Spirit, and I think, I don't think it's a heart issue. I think sometimes we don't know what to do with him because we haven't spoken a lot and we don't know. And I grew up in a church where the only time that was spoken about the Holy Spirit was when when we got to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So I got told very clearly, and and that is true, Galatians 5, you need to have peace, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, all of that. But that was the only thing that I knew about the Holy Spirit growing up. I didn't know that He was God and that He was with me. When I get saved, He's with me. And when I get baptized by the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit is the power of God. He comes with everything. He comes and He lives inside of me if I allow Him to and if I invite Him in. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, there are two parts, like I just mentioned. He comes with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We all have heard of the fruit, Galatians 5. I don't have it up there. It's the love, patience, goodness, self-control, all of that. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we need the fruit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? If ever you've seen it, you've, we all know character is just as important as anointing and power. In whatever you call to, not just pulpit ministry, whatever. Character is big. God cannot bless you with anointing and power unless the character is sorted out. Why? Because he loves you too much. Your foundation is going to crack if the character is not sorted out. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit is very important. The Holy Spirit, when we invite him in to come and live with us, we open this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, We say, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. Come in. He comes with all the fruit. Sometimes I have, um, my son sometimes struggles with self-control with null bite. Starts eating his nails. And then I say to him, and he's like, Mom, I can't help it. I don't know how to stop. I said, my boy, you just need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one with the self-control fruit. But it's up to you to say, Holy Spirit, help me. I can't do this. I cannot do this. I cannot be patient with my husband or my wife. I cannot have the self-control I need for X, Y, and Z. That is why the Holy Spirit came. Because God knew and He knows it's impossible for us to do it out of our own. So the Holy Spirit is our helper 
He's the gift from God. The second part that he, that he comes with is he comes with power. That's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 10. I don't have it up there. You can go read it. Have you guys heard of the, um, the gift of faith, prophecy, wisdom, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, working of miracles, gift of healing, discerning of spirits, praying in tongues, interpreting tongues. You guys have heard of that? That's the gifts of the Holy Spirit he comes with. So there's the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and then there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, this is a bit more teaching. We're going to get practical just now. Um, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's for power. Why? Because, I've got a scripture here, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4 to 5. Paul is saying, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. Do you see that? So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. This gospel was never meant to be just words. It was a gospel of power. Jesus went. He preached the kingdom. He explained to them. He said, this is what it means. This is what the law says. But then he demonstrated it with power. And we need to ask ourselves, where is the power? Is it in my life or isn't it in my life? And if it's not, where is, why is it not? Because clearly that's what the Word of God says. And I don't know about you, but I believe everything in here is the truth. I just take it as it is. And I'm not a theologian. So my husband helps me with that. But I know if God promised it, he didn't, nothing changed between them and now. We get this argument, but the gifts of the Spirit was just for the, for the launching almost of the church in Acts 2, and it was just to kickstart the church. Have you heard those arguments? Yeah? Nowhere in the Bible God says that. He doesn't say that. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, forever. Um, I got married to Richard 15 years ago. December it was 15 years. Now I want you to imagine it. I got married to Richard. I got him. He's very musical, extremely humble, very patient, really an amazing man. Okay? So if I get married to him and I say, Richard, yes, I will marry you, but you know what? I take you, but not your family. Okay? The in-laws, the brothers, we leave them out of the deal. I just take you. Is that, is that, is that okay with you? Or I take you, but you know what? This musical thing, this worshiping on the Sunday, every Sunday, morning, evening, he leads worship all the time at all the churches. That's all cool and well, but I don't want that part. I really like you and I want to marry you, but not that part. That's not, that's not how it works. When I married Richard, I got all of him, wards and all. I got all of him. I got the smelly breath in the morning and I got the handsomeness when he's dressed up in the evening. That's, that's the reality. And when we invite the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, He comes with everything. He doesn't just come with some of the gifts of power. He doesn't just come with some of the fruit. Oh, when self-control was handed out, I didn't get. It doesn't work like that. When we invite the Holy Spirit in, He comes with everything. So I've got news for you. The Holy Spirit, if He's inside of you and if it's not, we're going to pray for you this morning to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But if He's inside of you, you've got all the fruits of the Spirit to live the Christ-like character that God has called you to live. And you've got all the gifts of the Spirit to perform all the miracles God has called you to perform. To pray for the sick, it says there, to raise the dead. You've got it inside of you because it's not you. Who does that? It's the Holy Spirit. But if he's inside of you, he comes with everything. And that's, I can see I'm having some blank stares. That's all right. I'm going to go, I don't have it on yet, but I just feel I want to go to Matthew 10. 
You know, very often, if you like me, I struggled for a very long time with what is my calling, what is my purpose, what am I supposed to do on this earth, and why am I here? Now that I'm old, I'm just trying to get through each day, and it's not that big a deal anymore. But this is each of our calling, no matter where you are at. This is what God has called you to do. This is Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8. This is where Jesus sends out the disciples two by two. You know this story. He's now trained them. And he calls them into a room and he says, right, you're going to go out two by two. And this is what you're going to do. This is essentially the Great Commission broken down. You ready for it? If you're a disciple, are you a disciple of Jesus? Yeah. Okay, so, so this, is, this is what you're called to. Go. Okay. Job description. As you go, as you go away to school, to church, to work, to whatever you play, tennis, to the gym, wherever you go, as you go on holiday, as you go to the family, to the in-laws, this is what you'll do. Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, here we go, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Did you get that? That's our job. That's what we call to. No matter where you are, as a disciple of Jesus, that is what we call to. Now, it's, it's, yes, it is impossible. I cannot raise the dead. I'm waiting for the day. Because let me tell you, we're practicing. But here is where we sometimes get it confused. Okay, now I hear the Holy Spirit inside of me. He comes with all the gifts. He comes with the fruit. How do I access this? Or how do I get it to come out? How do I do it? You know? How do I do this stuff? I had a um, John Wimber. Have you guys heard of John Wimber? Um, yes, no, maybe. John Wimber. He's long dead. But he was the start of, uh, of one of the great awakenings, the major revivals in America. And he was not, he didn't grow up in a religious house at all. So he got saved and he started going to church. And after about two or three Sundays, he, he came up to the pastor and he said, I doesn't understand, when are we going to do this stuff? And he's like, what stuff are you talking about? And he says, the stuff, the raising the dead, the healing the sick, when are we doing this? You know, Because he read the Bible and Jesus is pretty clear. That's what we need to do. Um, but, but the first and the most important thing we need to remember is we are not the ones who do the stuff. It's the Holy Spirit who is the power of God. You see, my, my responsibility is to be the vessel. My responsibility is to walk in relationship with God the Father, with Jesus the Son, with Holy Spirit. That is my responsibility. How much time are you spending with God? I'm a quality time person. I told Richard when you asked me to marry him, I said, no problem. I really like you. Here's the deal. I'm high maintenance. I am. You can't come by with flowers or chocolates. I want time. And back then, he didn't think it was high maintenance. Now he knows it's high maintenance. Because now we're running a church and got three kids. And now for me to get quality time can sometimes be a challenge. But that is what is needed with God. We need time with him. Now, I'm not saying you need to sit and pray all day, every day. But John 15 said we need to abide in him. We need to be connected to him. We need to know his word. Why? Not to be puffed up and religious, but because his word leads us to him. It tells us more about who this God is, this loving Father. So the first part is relationship with the Holy Spirit, getting to know him. Who, who are you? What grieves you? When are you not happy? When, when is a situation or a movie I'm watching, when is that actually grieving you and uncomfortable to you? So that's the first part. The second part is that we need to surrender. And Surrender is this image of in battle when there are two countries at war. You've all seen a movie like that. And at some stage, one side throws down their weapons and puts up a white flag and says, okay, we're done. We're coming over. You can do with us whatever you want. You've all seen that? That's the image of surrender in my mind. Surrendering is, God, it's all yours. We say all, but we don't mean all. Okay? 
And I'm, I'm guilty of that. And I think I mean all until I get home and my husband says, I feel we need to give X amount of money to that person. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We need confirmation and fasting, you know. And then I realize, oh, that's not all. You see, God, I will go anywhere. But just don't send me too close to my mother-in-law or wherever. God, I will do anything. Just please do not ask me to share at school with the other parents. You see, surrendering all means all. And it's okay. There's no condemnation realizing, shucks, this is a little area that's not been surrendered. As soon as you realize it, it's like the orange light in the car. I'm not good with cars, but when the orange light goes on for petrol or oil, I know, oh, I need to stop. I need to make a plan. There's something going on here. Why? It's a warning. So once you realize, God, there's something in my heart here I don't really want to. Why am I struggling to let go of this thing? Why, why am I struggling to trust you with my kid this week going to school? Then that's the oil light. God in his mercy saying, there's a little area in your heart that you still need to surrender. So don't let the enemy come and condemn you. There's no condemnation. But that's just an invitation to further surrender. I had a, and I know we need to finish. I'm going to finish now. I had a lady in church that came to me once and she told me, she said, I'm so hungry for more of God. What can I do? I just want more of God. I want more of the Holy Spirit to work through me. I just want everything. So I said, you just need to surrender. Yes, but, but you know, I, I don't want him to embarrass me in church. And, and I don't want to be like one of those that cry and maybe shake and maybe God does something to me. I said, you know what? It's, um, that's not surrender. When you put your terms on the table, then we're not fully surrendered to God. The same John Wimber, he used to say, dignity is not a fruit of the Spirit. That's not to say God is going to embarrass you. He's a good father. He's a really, really good father. But if we want all of him, we want all of the Holy Spirit and want him to work through us, you've got to let go. Not in front of these people. God, I'm not going to speak to the. I'll go to those people, but not to these. That's not how it works. When we surrender, we surrender all. And we remember my responsibility is intimacy with him. I'm the vessel. He's the power that comes through me. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. If you guys want to play something, you're more than welcome. If you don't, it's also fine. I'm going to tell a last story. I, um, maybe you can open your eyes. You don't need to close your eyes for this one. I, um, while they're setting up, uh, 15 years ago, just after we were married, my, um, we stayed in Cape Town, and my parents came over for an evening, or we went to a restaurant, and my sister was also there. And I didn't quite agree with something my parents did or how they handled the situation with my sister made it quite clear and quite vocal to my dad that I don't agree with this. Um, my dad is an extremely loving and patient man, but when you push him too far, he goes over the edge sometimes. And I realized that was one of those nights. He doesn't go aggressive or anything, but I realized I pushed too far because he kind of went quiet and he said, and I knew it's coming. I'm married already. But I was so upset, and I felt it was my responsibility to tell them. Clearly, I know how they should be parenting my sister. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm what, 26 years old. I know everything. And I um, remember he phoned me the next morning, and he said, can I, come, can I come over for coffee? And I said, yes, sure. And he said, please, can Richard also be there for the coffee? I said, oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> I'll tell him to be there. Um, so we sit down at the table, and my dad, being the gentle, wise person he is, he said, Jolene, it's like this. There are lanes in life, Varna. Imagine you're on the N1 or the N2 driving to Cape Town. There are lanes. And he said, this is me and your mom in our lane with your sister, Anli, also in our lane. This is Richard, and you are in his lane now. You have moved out of our house and you have become part of his household and you are in his lane now. So I said, yes, I did all of that. I did marriage prep or whatever. We did all of that. Yes, I got it. He said, stay in your lane. (laughs) (laughs) 
and I'll never forget it. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we need to stay in our lane. We cannot do what only God can do. My responsibility is to be the vessel. He's the one that does the miracles. He's the one that brings the fruit. He's the one. Stop, I've got it. He's the one to do all of that. I cannot do that. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. So Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are, that you are here and you want an intimate relationship with each of us. I thank you that the, the invitation is there, the gift is there. It's on the table right in front of each of us. The gift of salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I, I think that there's maybe some people here that you realize you, you don't have a, a really a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You've heard about Him and maybe you've not really known how to relate to Him. And you realize that you've not fully surrendered to him. If that is you, why don't you just slip up your hand? Nobody's going to see. Thank you. Is there anybody else saying that? If there's any of you that's saying that I've actually not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've heard of it. And I'm saved. But I've never said, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Then to this morning, we, I want to pray with you. It's not a difficult, weird prayer. It's just saying, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. And then there are some people that I've felt that have almost gotten out of their lane. You've, you've, you know that there's certain areas in your life that only God can do because it's so impossible. And I feel that there's actually some people here that um, they need to send kids to school this, this week. But there's some, it, it could be a mom or a dad or even a grandpa or grandma. They're so anxious about this that you're barely eating or sleeping. Your tummy is in a knot. But you're so anxious and you're struggling to surrender that and letting that go. Is there anybody like that? Nobody's watching. You can just slip up your hand. Thank you. So we're going to pray for you as well. And then I also felt that there's some people here... That, that have actually been tormented by the spirit of death. You've struggled because you, you actually, um, I felt God saying that that, that person, you, you've actually struggled not just with suicidal thoughts, but you're actually, you're thinking about what if my spouse or my children or my friend dies before their days are up. And that's actually a spirit that's been tormenting you. And I feel the Holy Spirit saying, this morning, we're going to rebuke that from your life. It ends today. Is there anybody like that? There's more hands. Anybody else? Amen. Okay, there's more hands like that. Amen. And then the last thing I, I felt was we, we've really, um, not because we're special, we are nothing, but we've, we've really seen a lot, God healing a lot of people in Franschuk, their physical bodies. And it's nothing special with us. It's really nothing special. But we're just allowing the Holy Spirit to come in the power of God. And we're just saying, God, I'm taking the risk. I'm praying for this, these people to get healed because that is what you said in your word. And people have gotten healed of back pain. Their eyesight have been restored. Feet have been restored. Blood pressure has been restored. And I felt this morning specifically for eyesight if there's anybody struggling, there was a lady with what they call dry eye syndrome. She got some alcohol in her eyes and it was very dry. She had to put in solve the whole time. And during the service, we prayed. Nobody in front prayed. The lady next to her prayed for and said, eyes be healed. She came up afterwards and she said, her eyes are just watery all the time. The fluid is returned. God just did a miracle. So if there's anybody that's struggling with eyesight, we had blood pressure a lady that um, went to the clinic, the blood pressure was wrong. She got pills. She went home and she felt God saying, don't take it. She threw it down the toilet. Please don't do that. She threw the pills down the toilet, went back a couple of months, and the sister said, obviously what you're doing is working. Keep on doing it. And she said, I didn't do anything. I went to church. They prayed for me, and I didn't drink the pills. Her blood pressure is completely healed. So I want to ask, is there anybody... Um, I felt specifically eyesight and blood pressure, but actually anything else physically that you feel you want to trust God for healing for. If there's anybody like that, won't you just stick up your hand? If there's anybody that you need, I mean, okay. 
So I'm going to ask you to be very brave. We've got a couple more minutes. If you stuck up your hand for any of the stuff that I just mentioned, won't you just get up? I know this is, this is the braveness. This is the surrender. Won't you get up and come to the front? I'm sure. Just a ministry team. For anything I mentioned, just come to the front. We would love to pray for you. We're going to give it a bit of time. And even if you didn't stick up your hand, the overflow people at the bottom, you are welcome to rush up. You coming? Um, so I'm going to close the service and then we're going to spend time and just pray for these people. You are loved. You are brave. Well done for coming forward. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here to do miracles, that you are here to set people free, that you are here to heal. And I thank you, God, that we know that we serve a God who loves us, but also a God of power. And I pray that as we go into this week, Yes, Father, that we would make time to spend time, intimate time with you, to get to know you, to get to know your heartbeat, to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to ask if there are any counselors or people that can pray um, with us. You probably know who you are. If you're in front, please don't rush off. If we take a little bit of time to get to you, just stay here in the presence of God. We're going to get to everybody. The rest of you, you have a beautiful Sunday. It was wonderful to be here with you, and I'll hopefully see you soon. You are welcome to have